ان نماز علیکم شیطان و یوخب فاولیا اور مسلم یو مسٹ انڈرسٹینڈ دس از شیتان ہو از فائٹننگ یو فرام ہز سپورٹر ہز پارٹی نو قرآن سے حزب الشیطان حزب اللہ دیز آر دی ٹو پارٹیز دے آر کنفرنٹنگ ایچ ادر سو حزب الشیطان اللہ شیطان ہی پٹس دی فیئر ہی ٹرائز ٹو پٹ دی فیئر آف ہز پارٹی ان دی ہارٹس آف دی مسلم آف دی آف دی ممبرز آف دی حزب اللہ ان نماز علیکم الشیطان و یوقب فعلیا فلا تخافون و خافونی اللہ سیز ڈونٹ فیئر دیم فیئر می ان کن تو مومنین اف یو آر ریئل مومنین You should have my fear, not the fear of anybody else, any army, any power, any authority. You shouldn't fear anybody. It is shaitan who frightens you. وَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ الَّذِينَ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْكُفْرِ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should not be grieved seeing those people who are actively promoting kufr. يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْكُفْرِ The Quraysh, you know, they were promoting kufr. And they were doing this and that. They were sending messages to all the tribes. So this activity was coming to the knowledge of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah reassures him, don't you be grieved by all these news. They cannot bring any harm to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they cannot bring any harm to Allah, how can they bring any harm to you? يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهِ يَجْعَلَ لَهُمْ حَقٌ فِي الْآخِرَةِ Actually, the matter of the fact is, the fact of the matter is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want that these people should have any share in akhirah. So actually, he is giving them all this, you know, time so that they earn more sins, so that they, you know, earn the, the hell for, them, for themselves forever, eternal. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ For them is a very big justicement, very big punishment. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَبُوا الْكُفْرَ بِالْإِيمَانِ Verily those who have purchased kufr in place of iman, there was both options. They could have believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and purchased iman and given away kufr. But they have decided the other way. They have purchased kufr and given away iman. Who have purchased disbelief in exchange for belief. They will never be able to bring any harm to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْعَلِيمُ And for them is a painful torment. وَلَا يَحْسَرَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ Amla yumli means to give some respite so that, you know, his rope is loose. He can go, he could continue his activity, whatever it is. وَلَا يَحْسَرَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا These disbelievers shouldn't think that the respite that we are giving them to them is good for them. Khairun lahum lahum. It is not good for them. In the man, numli lahum li yasdadu isma. We are giving them this respite so that they increase their sins. The earning of sins, you know, is more. We are only giving this, this respite to them only for this purpose. Wa lahum azabun muheen. And for them is a very humiliating punishment. مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَذَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَى مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ Now this is very important. The whole philosophy. Why this testing? Why these inflictions to the Muslims? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't hold the hands of kuffar? He could do it. But he didn't. Why? Why you allowed the kuffar to slay and kill Muslims? So what is the wisdom behind it? This ayah is very important. مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَذَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَى مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ It is not for Allah. It's not the practice of Allah. It's not the sunnah of Allah. It's not the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he may leave the mu'mineen, the Muslims, عَلَى مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ In the condition in which you are presently. What is that condition? That the mu'mins and the munafiqeen, they are intermingled with each other. Allah cannot leave them in this condition. Hatta yameez al-khabeesa min al-tayyib. But he wants to distinguish, differentiate, to make manifest what is good from that which is wicked and which is corrupt. He wants that these two things should be manifestly separate from each other. Ma kaan Allahu liyadar al-mu'minin ala maan tumare hatta yameez al-khabeesa min al-tayyib. 
And this is also not the practice and the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he informs all of you about the unseen, the unseen, the ghayb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give the knowledge of ghayb to everybody. He selects from his, his messengers. He gives them the knowledge of the ghayb also, which is ghayb for the common man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the knowledge of that also to his messenger. Not all of that, but some part of that is given to the to the prophets, and that is the basic demarcation. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw Jannah. He saw Jahannam. It was shown to him in Miraj, also in this world. And then you know, the angels came to him, and he talked to them. They are also from the Zeb. So all this, this Wahi was coming to him from Zeb. So he was, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling him the, the, the news of the evils was to come, of the future prophecies. That was Ghaib. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't inform about his Ghaib to all the people. But walakin Allah yajtabi min dusri Ah, among the, his messengers, he selects whomsoever he likes. Fa'aminu billahi wa rasuli. Now it is your duty to have faith in Allah and his messengers. Whatever the messenger is saying is not saying from himself. It has been revealed to him. So whatever news he gives to you, whatever prophecies he is telling you, you have to believe in them because they have come to him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in his own, it's not his own concoction. God forbid. It is not his concoction. It is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa in tuminu wa tattaku falakum ajrun hafim. If you continue having faith and having taqwa, then for you will be the big reward, the great reward. Likewise, those people who are covetously withholding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, min fadlihi, out of his bounties. These munafiqeen, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has had given them riches, wealth. Now when there was the time of need for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad sallallahu invited people to spend for the cause of Allah, they withheld. They closed, you know, they, their treasures. They didn't contribute, they didn't in, make infaq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying they, they, they didn't think that whatever they are hiding and concealing and withholding from spending in the way of Allah is good for them. This is very bad for them. Now whatever they had withheld, you know, the wealth, the money, they have withheld. That will be hung with their necks, you know, on the day of judgment. وَلِلَّهِ مِرَاسُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْلَرْضِ You know, all the inheritage, heritage of, of the heavens and this earth, they all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ And whatever you are doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows them. Now here ends, you know, the commentary on the events of Uhud.